What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Established Runs NBA Injury Report Analysis Show. I'm Drew Dinkmeyer here with Mike Gallagher to walk you through a large 12-game slate in the association late season basketball as we only have a few days left here of the March Madness that will undoubtedly carry over into April as the season winds down. With me to talk through the injuries, as always, Mike Gallagher. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, good uh, matchup finished last night. Woke up and uh, worked with Chris grinding some minutes. So and it snuck in like a little baby hike. Usually a hike that takes me like about 50 minutes. I was like, all right, I'm going to book it. So I like jogged up and uh, made some good time. But yeah, almost got through all the minutes. Ready to ready to talk a one of probably what, four mega slates uh, to close out here. Got one coming Friday, next Friday, and then you know the finale. And there's like only like five more mega slates left. So that's good. Yeah, we uh, will do our best to get out of here in under an hour. We'll see if we can. Let's uh, get to the games. Let's start with Brooklyn and Washington. On the Brooklyn side of the injury report, they're without Cam Johnson, Dennis Smith Jr., Ben Simmons. They have a questionable tag on Cam Thomas, and Nick Claxton is listed as available here. What are your notes here on the Nets? Uh, yeah, Cam Johnson. I'm sorry, Cam Thomas, excuse me. Uh, we saw him warm up last time, and uh, the Nets broadcast actually had a video of him like grabbing at his back, so I'm getting ruled out. Um, sounds like he's got a decent chance to play, but you never really know with back spasms. Could always be a, a multiple game thing, but I know kind of came out of nowhere um, based on the timing and uh, what Kevin Ollie had mentioned. So, you know, probably game time uh, at best. I think um, you know, they might hold him out, and then if he doesn't play, obviously Jalen Wilson will get the start. And then the surprise, you know, we thought we were getting some Skolanski bucks on a Lonnie Walker over, but we did not. Uh, I played six first half minutes, only three second half minutes. They really played big. They played Noah Clowney at the four almost exclusively. They played Trendon Watford at the three. Uh, they were playing huge, huge there. Uh, and then, you know, Dennis Schroeder's role was so big. I uh, had the most touch time of anyone uh, on Monday. The drives were back. Uh, potential assists are pretty good. So Schroeder would be looking at a massive role uh, without Cam. Thomas, uh, again, still not going to have Cam Johnson. So Dorian Fee Smith will start again. Again, that'll really help Nick Claxton and should carve out some Noah Clowney minutes. I think Noah Clowney is a guy they're going to want to look at. They talked about kind of giving him minutes. We saw the, the rug pull on Dayron Sharp last week because they wanted to get a look at him. I think that given the way this team is 27 and 45, they want to start looking at Jalen Wilson, Noah Clowney, uh, and some other younger guys. But um, and mentioned this a couple of times. Lonnie Walker, I don't think Kevin Ollie likes him. Um, we saw him get really short rotations even before the last game. So um, Lonnie kind of falling a bit out of favor here. Yeah, certainly was the case. I think the biggest surprise to me, not that they're getting no clowny minutes. That makes a lot of sense in terms of getting a look at him and being able to value him. Same thing with Jalen Wilson, but still finding time to squeeze in Trenton Watford there. I'm not sure if that is simply more of a signal away from Lonnie Walker than it is positively for Trenton Watford. Um, but that was the most confusing or surprising mm -hmm. thing to me from this last game was, um, you know, shifting down positionally for Trenton Watford and allowing him to have minutes there. I think if Cam Thomas is back, I think of the reserve players in terms of we're talking about minutes that got s meaningful minutes last game, I think he would be most vulnerable there simply because I think they're pretty committed to getting clowny minutes kind of regardless. Mm -hmm. And so Dorian Finney-Smith and, and maybe the same for Jalen Wilson, maybe those guys would slide down a little bit more. So Watford's the guy that I think is most connected <clears throat> to Cam Thomas availability yeah. tonight. Yeah, it's pretty much what we have. We have him and Lonnie kind of a tier down from the Jalen Wilson that we move mm -hmm. clowny like into that tier uh, on the minutes with Chris and me doing that earlier today. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's move to the Washington side of things. Uh, their injury report is pretty full. No Tyus Jones, no Bilal Koulibaly, uh, no G-leaguers. So that's no Justin Champagny or Jules Bernard um, and no Landry Shamet, Isaiah Livers or Eugene Omiyori. So Kyle Kuzma off the injury report. He'll be back. They'll have Kyle Kuzma, they'll have Jordan Poole. Uh, what else are you expecting from Washington tonight? Yeah, should we should know the starting lineup. It should be uh, Jordan Poole, Corey Kispert, uh, Denny, uh, Denny Avdi, we saw that late illness uh, get him ruled out. Should be back. We'll see uh, how he's feeling. Maybe some possible minutes limits. And then Kyle Kuz with the four. And I think Rashawn Holmes at the five um, with uh, Marvin Bagley backing him up. They've pretty much covered that 48. I think they're continue playing that way. They've been better. They're actually on a three-game winning streak. Uh, their rim defense has still been pretty bad despite the additional size. Um, the, they've been getting a little bit luckier um, on the shooting. But, you know, the last three games they've had the Bulls, Raptors, and Kings. You know, two badish teams, one good team, and only 105 point 
seven points per 100 possession, which is really good. Ranks fifth over that span. So um, not buying it. I think that's more of a product of the Bulls, Bullsing, um, and the Raptors, Raptor thing. But, um, you know, always nice to see a bad team. You know, you know me. I love the bad team sneaking in wins uh, overall. But, yeah, so that's the starting lineup. Uh, I think Jared Butler's locked in in minutes. We talked about him yesterday, and the handling role was insane. You see the 13 uh, dimes. That was a career high. 21 potentials. Uh, so it wasn't like – it was a little lucky, but – you know, he he played really well. Uh, that role will get cut down today. Obviously, with Kyle Kuzma back, pretty big handling role. Uh, Patrick Baldwin almost going bye bye. Uh, we'll see if they play Tristan Vucevic a little bit, uh, and they want to play Johnny Davis. You know, they continue to play him for defense, uh, even though he has like bad games. Brian Keefe still talks him up uh, overall. So I think Jared Butler, Johnny Davis are still kind of situated for minutes. Uh, as you mentioned, they're not going to have Justin Champagne, which is pretty big. So uh, not having Champagne was made, made it pretty easy. You know. Famous last words, but it made it pretty easy to kind of do the Wizards minutes today because they only have like so many guys to fill their wing minutes tonight. Yeah, and I should note um, as well that with Kyle Kuzma being back, they also have Denny Avdia back as well. He's not listed on the injury report too. So we will see a fuller version of Washington than we've seen. You know, fingers crossed that there's no other late ads as Denny was a late ad last time. Uh, Let's move to Cleveland and Charlotte on the Cleveland side of things. Still no Donovan Mitchell, though there was a report today that he's targeting a Friday return, so it sounds like we're getting closer there. Um, none of the G-Leaguers, no Dean Wade, but we've got a Max Drews questionable tag here. Uh, what are your thoughts on the possibility of Max Drews returning tonight? Yeah, pretty likely, and every time I see a change on the injury report, um, and this is why I excuse myself to go hiking, uh, Chris Feeder's pod is just loaded with news. Uh, so he said that Max Drews, they basically had the setup that he's going to be like Evan Mobley, with regards to where he is injury wise. And he was like that questionable is probably in. And so we saw last time Mobley returned had that 20 to 25 cap. I think Max is going to get that today. So that's kind of where we're at. So we're going to have him starting. We have him at 23 minutes. I think he's going to be pretty capped um, given the way he's been out for what March 2nd or 3rd. So he's been out for like, you know, pretty much four weeks. Uh, And this is the target date mentioned, you know, two weeks ago that he's looking to return uh, late March. You mentioned Donovan, the knee soreness thing was why he was playing, didn't have his burst. So missed this one, probably cap on him again, uh, given the way he returned probably too soon. Um, If you, if you, you know, the way the timeline worked, if you weren't following the news, it may be like, okay, Donovan broke his nose. He's out. He was going to miss time before he broke his nose and Tristan Thompson hit him in the face just to note that. So, uh, Mobley's minutes trending up. I still think Max could start, but I wouldn't be surprised um, if he didn't. And they just started Karis Levert. We know Karis has been playing a ton. Uh, Darius Garland's passing has been pretty good. The drive stats have been pretty nasty. We've been talking about that forever. Um, so we'll see if this squeezes um, Sam Merrill's minutes. He can get squeezed. We'll see if uh, Craig Porter's minutes get squeezed a little bit. Uh, they're probably going to mostly cut out the, the Marcus Moore stuff that we've been seeing, You know, filling Max. Uh, as a three, they could play a little bit smaller there um, as well. I think the core's minutes are still pretty safe here. But, um, yeah, Max Struess will, will not really going to affect Karras. Obviously, if Karras is coming off the bench, which is what we're expecting for now, the minute ceiling isn't as strong. But I think Karras is still going to have a, a pretty good role uh, to, in a matchup that's just just so good. Uh, the Horns are absolutely horrible. <clears throat> yeah, I think the big question mark for Max Struess's potential return, Evan Mobley's minutes, you know, gradually increasing over time is how big of a threat things are to Isaac Okoro and Karis Levert because they've had really solid roles of late. Um, Levert, I, you know, I kind of wonder, honestly, I think Levert's minutes are probably even more stable than Okoro's, which was not the case early in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, but just because the offense that he's creating now, maybe if Struess is providing extra offense, maybe that helps ease that. But I could even see like Garland and Levert continuing to play kind of lower thirties and Levert helping manage Garland as well, because he's been so effective as a ball handler, but Okoro brings a role that they don't really have elsewhere. So it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of tricky to figure through things. Um, we even could see, you know, like George Niang role be impacted um, in terms of finding minutes for, for Max Drews. And this is stuff that we've also been talking through in terms of a Cleveland playoff rotation we haven't seen them all healthy in a while. And so trying to figure out where the minutes are when you get playoff minutes, when you get the starters raised even more is kind of tricky for a team that played really tight last year in the playoffs. And so I'm interested in seeing just over the next couple of weeks, as Strews gets reintegrated, as Donovan Mitchell gets reintegrated, what it looks like for guys like Okoro, Levert, George Niang, um, certainly Sam Merrill and, and those, those cast of characters are, you know, going away as we get into playoff season or, or, you know, 
maybe for a possession or two when you need a three point shot up or different things like that. But that's kind of where I'm interested in watching Cleveland uh, for the, for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, they did junk up the game. They ran a lot of like big to big stuff, you know, with Mobley and, and Allen running stuff. That was pretty cool. You see the eight assists for Mobley. Uh, real interesting wrinkle. They're just trying to find offense uh, any way they can. Certainly easier to do against Charlotte. But uh, yeah, Charlotte's. I guess I could just kind of pivot. We'll just hit Charlotte really quick while I'm yep. here. They're good to go. You know, they've got they've had the same injury report. Uh, pokashevsky has been playing pretty well. Uh, got talked up by um, Steve Clifford. We're seeing a lot more uh, Brandon Miller on ball. I think he had his most. Uh, or close to his most ISO and pick and roll handler points. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, he's just really turned it on here from a role perspective. All right, let's go to Golden State in Orlando. Golden State gets an, a nice needed win for them on the front end of the back-to-back yesterday in Miami. They do that little Florida swing today, go up to Orlando, um, where I'm sure Steph Curry would love to be getting in some rounds of golf uh, around <laughs> the, the game tonight. Golden State listed Trace Jackson Davis and Jonathan Kaminga, both questionable, both with knee soreness, uh, right knee for Trace Jackson Davis, left knee for Kaminga here. Notably, Draymond Green is not listed. Steph Curry is not listed. Klay Thompson is not listed. They were able to kind of keep minutes in check last night because of, uh, you know, pulling away here in the fourth quarter. We know that every game down the stretch is really important for Golden State from a seeding perspective and trying to hold off now the Rockets, who the red hot Houston Rockets, who have made it so that they are just a game back of Golden State from play-in conversation. Golden State still two games back in the loss column from the Lakers in play-in conversation. So I'm expecting full go from the Golden State side of things, but legitimate injury concerns on both Trace Jackson Davis and Jonathan Kaminga. What's your read there? Yeah, so we know the Trace Jackson Davis, he had the fall in the Minnesota game, got ruled out pretty early. So we'll see if he can play. Maybe it was back-to-back related. I'm not really sure. Didn't get any details from Steve Kerr. Um, and then Kaminga, this is new. Uh, he hasn't had knee soreness since uh, late in the calendar year. So this season, but last year, 2023, it wasn't serious. It was just like a contusion, bruising, yada, yada. So and that's it. So this isn't like a lingering thing. Just picked it up, it sounds like. But don't have much to add there. Played pretty well in a bad matchup. I thought Kaminga was pretty impactful. Obviously, the big story yesterday was Clay Thompson back in the starting lineup. Steve Kerr said after the game that they kind of need his energy. Um, that'll help his minute ceiling a lot. Obviously, the matchup goes from one of the best to one of the worst. Uh, the the Magic are one of the best teams at taking away catch and shoot stuff. We know Miami is a big three point funnel, so you know not surprising that Clay crushed. You know, really impactful game. I think he's here to stay. Pause has been pretty bad. Um, you know, the the shooting has been there. He's been a little bit more prone to defensive mistakes. So I think they're locked and loaded. Uh, everyone else, we'll see how they hold up here. This is a pretty tough matchup. Orlando's so rested. They've been off since Saturday. So uh, really tough ass to come in on a back-to-back. Luckily, not much travel going from Miami uh, to Orlando. But, um, yeah, pretty pretty tall order against Orlando's, off, Orlando's defense. Uh, just super quick to highlight them. They are on fire. They are um, – they are oh no I lost my note but they're first, they're like first over the last like month or something like their defense is absolutely ridiculous a little bit schedule aided but uh, Orlando's playing really well defensively right now. Um, all right, let's move to the Orlando side where Gary Harris is out, Kevin Harris is out. Uh, then they're without their G leaguers and they listed Caleb Houston questionable, which is important just because when Gary Harris has been out, he started on occasion. So, what are your expectations for what we see from Orlando tonight? I think Caleb's missing. Missed practice yesterday. Uh, only did some light shooting at shoot around, according to Jamal Mosley. Listened to his presser, which I had to listen to twice because the only no pressers won't let me rewind without getting a commercial. Not mad about that at all. But um, so I kind of think he's missing. So that could mean a few things. They don't start Cole. They wait Cole off the bench, even though Cole started the last last game, second half. So I think they may go to Fultz. Sometimes they pull Anthony Black out of nowhere. Um, maybe they pull something crazy and go like Jonathan Isaac. I don't think they would do that against the Warriors. They said that they they said that they spent most of their practice time really game planning for the Warriors. So I think they would play pretty small here. Maybe they put Anthony Black out there just to fill some minutes. But I think Caleb Houston has a you know pretty decent chance uh, to miss this game. If he isn't, I think he is starting though. Um, but yeah, not and whoever starts, I think is pretty nominal. It would be Cole picking up a pretty good bit. We'll see how many minutes Jalen Suggs could play. Uh, obviously, he's been you know great defensively, so he'd have to guard Steph. But just a different assignment, you know. He's kind of like gets into guys, limits from getting downhill. Steph, Steph won't go on downhill. Steph's going side to side around you, around three rounds, three screens. So uh, a little bit tougher for Suggs. And actually, Steph lit him up earlier. I think he scored thirty six or something thirty um, when they played them earlier this season. 
Yeah, I agree with you that I think Anthony Black would be the primary candidate to fill the Caleb Houston role if Houston is mm -hmm. unable to go. Um, I think, you know, if they're talking about game planning defensive coverages against Golden State, that's talking about most likely um, trying to figure out how, you know, to best defend the splits action and all the off-ball mm -hmm. movement and different things like there. And you need kind of more guard-ish type players to fight through screens and kind of be able to recover quickly. So I, I think you probably see Anthony Black start in that instance. Yeah. and depending on how his defense goes uh, would kind of depend on the minutes there. But obviously, you know, we've seen Jonathan Isaac and Mo Wagner and Fulton Anthony kind of um, locked into their reserve roles. Um, I think you could see Anthony Black make an appearance for kind of token minutes uh, with, with mm -hmm. Caleb Houston if he's unable to go. Okay, Clippers and Philadelphia. On the Clippers side of things, uh, they're without Robert Covington, Joel Embiid, D'Anthony Melton. They've got a questionable tag here on Kelly Oubre. With left shoulder soreness, he missed the last game against Sacramento. What are your notes on Ubre's availability tonight? Yeah, he was game time, didn't go. Uh, so he, it's shooting, uh, you know, shoulder shoulder soreness on his shooting arm. So not a great read. It's the Sixers. We're not going to find out until thirty minutes before. Um, so we saw the the crazy, you know, inbounder again uh, on Sunday. The no Batum. Uh, so he should be should be in there. But if Ubre's in, I expect him to start. Uh, so I'm expecting if Ubre's in, uh, Tyrese Maxey, uh, Kyle Lowry, Tobias Harris, uh, Ubre, and then Mobamba would be the five. And then if Ubre can't play, it would be Batum there. So um, pretty straightforward. Again, don't have a great lean, but I think he would play a pretty good bit. Next question would be how many minutes is Tyrese Maxey going to play? We saw him play 44 uh, in the Clippers game. And his – so I was thinking about this on my hike today. He's like classic, you know, the running back in football who like doesn't – get catches you know because his his like he's getting like all the carries but like if he doesn't like score a touchdown like your line's not that good so like derrick henry right uh because he doesn't have like a lot of a lot of handling stuff doesn't have a big assist pop but he has to like really score his points to, to pop off random but um yeah i think that that mostly covers it should note we got dj wilson minutes um that was yeah. kind of random nick, nick nurse said that that went well so that's something we could possibly be on the lookout for especially if uber doesn't play um a little bit I don't know. It seemed like he really liked it. So uh, for what that's worth, uh, maybe we, we get some DJ minutes to, you know, cut into Mo Bomber or anything of that nature. Yeah, it's not March basketball without DJ Wilson making a random appearance <laughs> on a team that I was not prepared for when I see a box score. Um, let's move to the Clippers side of things where there's nothing on the injury report. They yeah. literally have nothing filed at all. So that seems to be all systems go for Russell Westbrook as he made his return last game. What are your notes here on the Clippers? Yeah. Uh, just that they mix in some PJ Tucker center minutes. Uh, Ty Lue said that they were going to look at some stuff, and they said this was a good opportunity to do so. Perhaps match up with the way the Pacers play fast. I'm not sure. Maybe they do it again. Um, but the 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 lead here was Lou is pissed. Uh, he called his team soft a ton, and they are playing real bad. Uh, they are. Though I think they're the worst um, in defense. Yeah, they are 130 uh, points per 100 in their last, I think, six games. I got a lot of notes, uh, but they're bad. Uh, since the break, I think they're 29th in defense. They are getting absolutely pummeled uh, on defense. So they got to come out ready here. Uh, Paul George, we've talked about this. The handling rolls way, way up. Uh, James Harden got a bunch of questions from Ty Lue, uh, about Harden not being as aggressive, and it's quite clear he's not. And just behind the curtain a little bit, we've we show some Harden overs and they're like, I can't, can't do it. Like he's just not the same Harden right now. And I think that shoulder thing that we saw him be limited and miss some time for is affecting his aggressiveness with the shot. Yeah. And I mean, they've uh, basically ever since we finally gave in and talked about them as title contenders on mm -hmm. the podcast, they've just been a straight downhill arrow. Uh, the betting market's still pretty optimistic on the Clippers from yeah. a playoff perspective. They still have the second best odds in the Western Conference to win the Western Conference, which is surprising to me. Um, but obviously a lot of credibility there based on the players' uh, historical performances in the playoffs, including Kawhi Leonard mm -hmm. there. Um, all right, let's move to the Knicks in Toronto on the Knicks side of things. OG Ananobi out, Julius Randle out, Alec Burks questionable, and Mitchell Robinson questionable. So mm -hmm. we may see the return of Mitchell Robinson tonight. What are your notes on the Knicks? Yeah, big big update. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, he was not cleared for contact as of March 12th. So this is a pretty quick uh, of it. If he is in, that's pretty quick to go from uh, that severe of an ankle sprain to you know no contact two weeks and then playing. So that's a pretty quick. And then he did do full full contact five on five on March 20th. So he's had a week of five on five contact. 
that is a little bit more in line. That's in line with the guy who's capped hard. Uh, so maybe one rotation, maybe two. I think there's probably no chance he's playing like 18, 19. Uh, Fred Katz had reported that they basically talked about bringing him off the bench. Again, this all aligns with the timeline here, but a little bit earlier, you know, there was some talk that Tibbs said he could be back pretty soon. Uh, I thought it would be the weekend. This is, you know, pretty early. So maybe they send him out one more. It's like a, Hey, wink, wink, Mitch is almost back, but it does seem like he's got a pretty good chance to return again, for sure. Expecting the same starting lineup uh, of Jalen Brunson, Deuce McBride, who only played 43 minutes because of garbage. Um, and then Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, and then we'll see how the bench shakes out. Certainly Jericho Sims will be most vulnerable, possibly going away. Uh, Precious Achua, who plays some combo 4-5, he may play more 4, which could squeeze a little bit on Bogdan, who got his minutes up but was dinged up because of the Alec Burke. Alec Burke's possibly back here, but may get squeezed as well. They may may play just a little bit bigger um, to squeeze some of these fringy guards, and that's that's from 3-4, to four, not from 1-2, to two, because we know Deuce McBride, I think, is Locked and loaded. They're just going to run him out there uh, until he, until basically they get OG and Anobi. I think that's kind of the plan. We saw Tibbs say, hey, he's rested. So I think Deuce is just locked in for huge minutes uh, until they get OG and or Julius back. Yeah, and the Knicks obviously still have a lot to play for. They're a half game back of Cleveland for the number three seed in the Eastern Conference. They're only two back in the loss column uh, from Milwaukee as well. So some outside hope at continuing to improve playoffs seeding and positioning there. Um, obviously a softer opponent today. It'll be interesting to see as they get healthier, how they uh, choose to impact the minutes distribution. So far it hasn't, they just are not taking anything from starters when guys are back. So we'll see uh, where, where Tibbs goes from here. Toronto side, um, no RJ Barrett, no Scotty Barnes, no Chris Boucher, DJ Carton, Jakob Pertl, Jonte Porter, or Emmanuel Quickly. Um, so the injury report is fairly clean. Gary Trent Jr. is not on it. He's, you know, we've seen this the last three games, I think, without Quickly, essentially, without Barrett and without Barnes and so on and so forth. So what are your notes here on Toronto? Yeah, so we've seen two games in a row now that Emmanuel Quickly and Archie Barrett had reconditioning tags, and Darko was asked about that if he was coming back. They said they didn't know. I thought there may be a chance that they were going to have him back today, but it sounds like they'll keep him out for one more. Do they keep him out another one? They are clearly tanking, trying to protect that uh, protection from the Spurs trade from Jakob Pertl, and this is just bad man ever since iq went away they have a 100.0 offensive rating only the hornets are worse they, they can't score man um this team is a disaster on top of the knicks even without og they've been really good so to the hornets to the raptor score like 80 today um i have no idea but uh i saw when i woke up today the raptors social media you know they had like the game day and they'll put like a player up there uh, they put Javon Freeman Liberty as like the co- like the cover boy um, of their like hey game day tweet. So I thought that was pretty funny and pretty much encapsulates where this team is. So expecting Javon Freeman Liberty to start, uh, Grady Dick, uh, Gary Trent, Ochak Baji, and then Kelly Linick there. Uh, they are playing Mahamadou Gay uh, as the backup five, mixing in some small ball stuff. Bruce Brown off the bench. Uh, Jordan Noir out the bench, and they are going to play Kobe Simmons, it sounds like, on this 10-day deal. They didn't bring back Jamias Ramsey. They said they want to look at Kobe Simmons, who's been a bit of a journeyman. Uh, much like DJ Wilson, you know, we get these Kobe Simmons minutes, who had a pretty good G League season. Uh, so he's kind of locked in to cover up most of those point guard minutes with Javon Freeman Liberty. Yeah, and if you're interested in more information or our thoughts on the Jonte Porter prop uh, betting investigation and situation, you can find... Uh, Established on NBA's episode number 358 of our podcast, which is also the video edition is also up on this YouTube channel. You can check that out and get our thoughts more on the uh, challenges, the pros and cons of legalized sports betting and how the Shante Porter situation kind of developed. Um, yeah, get our thoughts there. All right. Portland in Atlanta on the Portland side of things. DeAndre Ayton, questionable. Jeremy Grant, doubtful. Matisse Teibel, questionable. Still without Malcolm Brogdon, Shane Sharp, Anthony Simons. I mean, of course, Robert Williams. So, what are your expectations for what we see from Portland tonight? Yeah, big Q tag on Aiton. Don't really have a great read on it. They're certainly resting guys. I mean, they started five rookies back-to-back games. I think they want to continue to do that. They continue to talk about Ryan Rupe, or Rian Rupe, uh getting minutes. Talked about this a month ago, how the language barrier is starting to come down. They can communicate with him better. I think they want to play him a pretty good bet. So I think that the four starters are pretty much locked, whether it's Scoot Henderson, Rupe, Chris Murray, Tuani Kamara, and then is it Duap Breather, DeAndre Ayton? I don't really know. I think they want to get a look at Ayton for a little bit longer here, but obviously, if he doesn't play, it's Duap. Um, you know, Jabari's minutes will be a little bit tied to. We saw Delano Banton play just huge, huge six man role, man, just out of nowhere. Uh, one of the biggest roles in the NBA off the bench because 
Roops and Murray, you know, they don't really shoot. And, you know, they're, they're rookies. Like, there's, and Tumani fouls, like, someone's going to pick up foul trouble, right? So, like, there's so many paths to Delano just getting all the minutes here. Uh, Scoot's role has been pretty good. That The touch time, the drives have been really strong. That's never been a problem. It's the finishing on those drives. Uh, you know, one of the worst layup guys in the NBA. So, yeah, um, we'll see about DeAndre Ayton, but expecting a lot of rookies to fill most of these minutes here. Yeah, and from Scoot's perspective, if they want to get a better look at him, he's got to stop fouling. I mean, the second yep. consecutive game, he's in foul trouble, only plays 25 minutes. I think he played 28 the game before. I think they're trying to get him up to like 33, 34, but I wonder if that changes sort of his defensive responsibilities as well. Because um, I know yeah. Chauncey talked about trying to have him on like primary guys, but they need to look at him offensively and – yeah, uh, he's not able to stay out there right now. So I'm interested to see if that changes over time. Yeah, they, as well. they do that a lot. They did it with Anthony Simons, but like you said, Anthony Simons doesn't foul that much. So yeah, um, yeah, they're almost like biting, biting up their nose to spite their face with uh, with this move. Atlanta side of things, um, the big news here is Dejounte Murray is questionable, and they're mm-hmm. still without Trey Young and Nanyaka Kongwu and Jalen Johnson. Um, they have they're also without Kobe Bufkin, and obviously they lost Sadiq Bay for the season. Yeah. They're without AJ Griffin and Muhammad Gie as well. So the questionable tag on DeJounte Murray really looms large here. Mm-hmm. What are your expectations for it from Atlanta perspective in terms of the standings and whatnot? You know, there's some incentive for them to try to get nine versus 10 because it's a home play in game compared to a road play in game for the first edition of the play in game. But other than that, they're, you know, five and a half games up on Brooklyn for the 10 seed. And DeJounte's carried a really heavy role of late. So I would not be surprised if he needs some time. Uh, but what are your what's your read here? They got a very surprising win against Boston, come from way behind in a game that they weren't expected to. So maybe they feel like they kind of got one from the schedule gods there. But what's your read on the DeJounte Murray questionable tag with lower back soreness? Yeah, front end. Uh, they're the only team that's on a front end tomorrow. They play Boston again tomorrow. So um, I don't have a read on it. You know, obviously DeJounte looked great. He's had arguably the best role in the NBA, like first touch time, like top three drives, top three potentials. The role is Luca-like without the Luca high-end skill there. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have a great read on it. I think we, one big tell on this will be Seth Lundy, who is questionable with a G League tag. So if in a world where, say, we get the Seth Lundy upgrade to available and we're still waiting on DeJounte, I think that Seth Lundy available tag would be a bit of a tell that DeJounte could be you know, doubtful ish, but you know, it's back to back. I, the guy, again, the guy is playing like 40 minutes almost every night with again, just the biggest role in the NBA arguably. So I think he definitely could get a game off here. Um, if he did miss Trent force, almost certainly uh, would get the start. Um, the handling would not be very, very big. I don't think he'd handle a little bit. They ran, they ran a lot of stuff through bit. Uh, I, a lot of like front court touches for Deandre and Quinn Snyder had a comment saying like, Hey, you know, we don't even run offense for DeAndre Hunter. We just expect him to go score. Um, so DeAndre would have a massive role. Bogdan's handling, I should maybe bury the lead a bit there. Bogdan's yeah. role would be massive uh, from a handling perspective. So that's kind of what I was getting with Trent Forrest. He would maybe be a start in like name only, but it would be Bogdan, Hunter, even Vit. Like they, they run stuff with Vit like a lot. Like they run some DHO stuff with him. Uh, he's a, sometimes a point of attack defender. We saw Tatum start at the point. He was picking him up full court. Um, so Veet's like really earned earned minutes here. A guy that we, you know, my bit was was long and an arduous path, but um, you know, we're here with, with I'm talking about Veet Crutchy now. Yeah, and Forrest might start as the point guard, but be a primary defensive point guard option, not yep. a you know primary offensive initiator. Um, because this team, um, certainly against a Portland team that you know might be forced into playing bigger at the guard spot if, if Scoot Henderson mm-hmm. gets into foul trouble or different things like that, but. Um, yeah, it's interesting for Atlanta's perspective. If you were kind of mapping out from their perspective, I think you'd try to, if DeJounte could go and it was a rest situation, I think you'd try to play him tonight, rest him tomorrow, because it's like, we're probably not beating the Celtics again. Let's try to get a win here. But um, it'll be interesting to follow because obviously if you take DeJounte and Trey off, like there's just so much opportunity available in a pretty soft matchup against Portland. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to Detroit in Minnesota. Um, Cade Cunningham is questionable for Detroit here, as is Jaden Ivey. Uh, so the backcourt could get really thin. They are going to have Jalen Duran back. He's listed available as he returns from back spasms after missing the last three games. Marcus Sasser has a probable tag with an upper respiratory illness. And we talked about that guard depth there with Ivey and Cunningham and Sasser all in the injury report. Front court's not much better. They do get Duran back, but they're without someone. Fontecchio, Taj Gibson, Isaiah Stewart, Asar Thompson, and Stanley Amude. 
So what do we got left for Detroit tonight uh, going into the league's best defense in Minnesota? Yeah. Um, this line might get to like 24. I'm, I'm like half kidding, but this team this team could be really bad. So I don't have a great read on, on Cade. You know, we talked about this, this knee thing. That once he got that Q tag for knee management and that non-back-to-back, we're like, okay, we're going to get these Q tags regardless. So uh, expect a limitation. Uh, you know, late day ad for Ivy, that's never good. Uh, so if I think if one of them are out, Marcus Sasser is going to start. And Marcus Sasser had a massive role, you know, scored 24, 21 drives, 13 points on drives. That's for a rookie. That's really good. Like Scoop can't even do that because uh, he can't make layups. But um, yeah, so I think Sasser would be starting kind of regardless. We've seen them overlap with Kate at, at times. So one of those guys, uh, I think Troy Bound probably in starting, probably is going to be guarding Anthony Edwards. He might even start the two just because their guards are like that thin. I think that's unlikely. Um, and then I, I think they might go to Chimezi Metu here. Uh, we've seen to- Tosan Awuma kind of fill in there a little bit, kind of in and out. Um, but I think they go to Metu for size there. Not confident. They could certainly start Tucson. They could start all three. Um, start Troy at the two. Like if they're out of guards, you know, they start Sasser, Troy Brown. I think it's unlikely. Um, and maybe they play Buddy Beheim. I think that they're not comfortable starting Evan Fournier. Um, maybe they start Jared Roden. Like I, I have... No confidence um, in this team. Monty Williams is, is more upset about Dante DiVincenzo roasting him than, you know, putting out NBA players. Uh, hit, perhaps the quote that summed it up best was like, hey, we have guys on our team fighting for their NBA life, uh, which, again, like, listen to all those names I just rattled off. Like, Buddy Bayheim. how much NBA content are you going to consume talking about Buddy Bayheim and, and Tosan and all these guys? But um, that's where the Pistons are at. It's just a nasty, nasty roster. Right now, we just have Hedge Fest, uh, and it'll get even worse if, if more guys are ruled out. Yeah, we'll also note that they are actively a lot of the uh, beat man. commentary. Yeah, I know Shays. I'm just we'll missed, uh, um, A lot of the beat commentary around Mar- Marcus Sasser has been him trying to learn how to play as a primary point guard um, in the league. He, you know, at Houston, he was he got he was uh, a scorer of sorts. He's more comfortable in the scoring role, trying to find the balance between being a lead initiator and a uh, ball handler. There's been a lot of talk about that. So I, I think they're going to continue to emphasize the development of Marcus Sasser. My guess is that we'll see at least one of Ivy or Cade Cunningham sit tonight and Sasser's mm-hmm. still in the starting lineup. Um, and he will continue to play big minutes, even in games that are not competitive. We see him get up to 35 minutes in this game that is not competitive. I think they're really focusing on the development there for him. So not a great matchup, but probably still a lot of opportunities for Marcus Sasser. Uh, Minnesota side of things, they've got questionable tags on Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert obviously still without Carl Anthony Towns. This is a team that is very liberal with their use of questionable tags. So, you know, we always are sort of skeptical. Um, They're also pretty well rested here. They're off two days, uh, two days uh, since their last game and they have another day off until their next game. Then again, it's the Pistons. Um, So what are your thoughts here on these questionable tags for Rudy Gobert and Anthony Edwards? Yeah, I think they're in there. Um, Obviously, Anson, right? He's been playing through this, been playing great. The shooting numbers are down like a little bit, but non-shooting hand, I don't think it's an issue. I think it's just him missing shots. So, yeah, I don't have much to add. So, expecting that same starting lineup. They didn't close with Nas for a couple minutes late. Uh, That was because of the matchup against the Warriors. So, I'm expecting if this game's close or almost any other matchup, I think Nas Reed is closing. And Nas Reed, whew, buddy. I mean, he may just absolutely dominate this team with the, with the lack of front court depth uh, during back. I don't think really affects too much. We saw Duran. It's crazy. Like once Isaiah Stewart went away there, even before Duran got that went down, like their defense inside fell off. So this is going to be just a, a, like I joked about it being a 23 point spread, but this is just such a mismatch um, just from the way these teams play. So yeah, I'm expecting everyone in, but maybe they just sit someone out to, you know, give Gobert a game off because it is the Pistons. Let's go to Houston and Oklahoma City. On the Houston side, they're still without, of course, Tari Eason, Alperin Shingun, Cam Whitmore. Uh, what are your notes here on the Rockets? Yeah, not much injury-wise. Uh, you know, Jabari, he will be um, back in the starting lineup after the Chris Dunn incident cost him one game. Chris Dunn cost him two, so he's still out. We'll talk about him in a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, they're the hottest team in the NBA. They're doing it with offense and defense. I think they're second in offense in their nine-game winning streak, fifth in defense. Um, just movement cutting shooting just uh switchability on defense they're switching so much because they have so many good on-ball defenders 
uh, in the first uh, in the first unit, uh, and include and include Jalen Green. I thought Jalen Green's been defending pretty well. The steals are up. The, you know, he's blocking some shots. They're they're playing awesome. Obviously, he's you know one of the hottest players in the NBA um, as well. So um, expect obviously Jabari back in the starting lineup. We know the rest is the same. We'll see how many minutes Jock Landau gets. We saw Jonas Valanciunas get really cut down uh, yesterday. Didn't play in the second half at all because you know the spacing from Chet, which we talked about uh, on the DFS show that that was a concern on Joe Val's upside there, but. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much good to go. Um, you know that'll affect you know Jay Sean Tate a little bit, Jeff Green a lot, but um, expecting them to go. And I think they're going to give it a full go here, right? Uh, we said this for a while now. They're they're going for this one, and now they know it. You know they're knocking on the door um, to to catch the Warriors. So big game, and they got they got a nice little break here. Yeah, finally a little shooting regression from Jalen Green. Didn't matter. Played mm-hmm. forty minutes, um, just nine for twenty six from the field, but still poured in twenty seven, six and three with four stocks. Which the stocks uh, production of him of late has been really good and uh, booing a lot of the fantasy performances as well. Oklahoma City side, they did file on the two thirty injury report, and Shea Gilgis Alexander will not be playing tonight. Mm-hmm. He's listed out on the second night of back to back here. Uh, they, uh, the other notes here are just a couple of G leaguers, Jang and Flagler listed out, and a couple of G leaguers listed questionable with Sar, Lindy Waters, Keontae Johnson. But the headliner, obviously, no Shea Gilgis Alexander. So, what are your notes here on the Thunder tonight? Yeah, my groan uh, when I was talking Pistons because I knew this was coming. Um, and I was upset that we didn't get it on the 12 30 because I, I wanted to hit uh, 1 30 because I knew some stales were going to be there. Uh, to hit my guy J Dub, so expect obviously he's going to sit. Uh, just to get the background on that, he injured his quad on March 20th, was playing through it, and then after the game, Mark Dagnall said they're going to talk about it and maintain. And just by Shea's body language, they were going to sit him. So it was pretty clear to me he was going to sit. Uh, that should get Casey Wallace in the first unit. Obviously, J Dub will be handling a ton. Um, they did switch their rotation a little bit. Uh, SGA subbed out early. Um, I love Mark Dagnall, man. Um, you know. And I heard uh, if you listen to JJ Redick and LeBron, they're like, "Hey, you know, Dagnall's so good," and he just a great way to describe. We see so many wrinkles from Dagnall, right? And he said, "Like, I don't want to be a moving target for opposing coaches." It's just what a great way to describe, uh, you know, how you're trying to you know, t- tweak people. You know, if you're pulling out SGA who plays full first quarters out early. I uh, just love Mark Dagnall. He's he's got coach there in the bag. So yeah, should give me a lot of Case and Wallace. Uh, obviously, J Dub will be handling like a madman. Um, Giddy's going to handle a bunch. Giddy's hot. You know, we've seen him shoot the ball well. Five threes. They were leaving him open and bearing. He's some big threes late. Um, and, well, entertaining game, man. Um, you know, the, the seesaws. We saw big runs all over the place. Just a killer game. So expecting Case in the start. Giddy will have a really long leash. Uh, Giddy guarded Trey Murphy, which is not his his not his bag. You know, that was he he played pretty well. So really good game uh, from Josh Giddy. Uh, and then it should note that Aaron Wiggins, which was another tell um, that SGA was going to sit, he'll be back in the rotation today. Mark Dagnall said they were trying to get him in in the second quarter, but the way the game was going with the big run, they had a huge second quarter. They just couldn't get the Wiggins because the, the group that was in there, they wanted to run him out there until they're ready to get the starters in there. So Aaron, Aaron Wiggins will for sure be back. Um, even before SGA, he would have been in there. Um, and yeah, we'll see more more Isaiah Joe and kind of piece it together. We could see kind of a lot of players. We know Mark Dagnall will run it pretty deep in a back-to-back. Yep. All right, Indiana and Chicago on the Indiana side of things. Um, they've listed TJ McConnell and Aaron Neesmith questionable along with some G-leaguers. Uh, they're still without Benedict Matherin, of course. Uh, what are your notes here on the Pacers? Yeah, so we saw uh, uh, Aaron Neesmith not play the last game, not too surprising he tweaked his ankle over the weekend played through it but carlisle said he was all right so we see that a lot you know guys tweak their ankle play through it swan comes up and they miss so that's usually a sign they're back pretty quick so i would lean neesmith in but not confident you know sometimes guys miss like two three four games there um so the question would be if he's out do they start jaris walker i thought jaris walker had a pretty big impact in this game kind of like broke the game open when he was in there um you know, they're going to want to have him for DeMar. Um, so I think that's a little bit better matchup for size. Uh, so I think there's a chance that he starts over Ben Shepard if Neesmith's out. Obviously, uh, if TJ McConnell isn't playing, that will open up a more minutes and handling uh, for Ty- for Tyrese Halliburton. We know that, you know, the, the, the assists against the Bulls, I think it's 26 potentials per game uh, in the three games for, for Tyrese Halliburton against the Bulls. Uh, so that would be something to watch. Um, but yeah, Jarris would definitely benefit uh, either way because they would kind of shift Nemhard in the back of one on top. So that would open up some minutes at the two, Phil Shepard at the two, and then you've got more minutes at the three. So like 
the TJ McConnell minutes are going to affect the twos and threes and fours because Nemhard had to shift uh, in his second unit stuff. So yeah, kind of a little bit unclear, but sounds pretty minor. McConnell plays through a lot of stuff, but I think I think they're in. But I think I mapped out the rest there. But I think Jarris Walker, if they did have him in, I wouldn't be surprised if Jarris like leapfrogs McDermott. Man, um, they seem like they really want to play with Jarris, and he's been you know when he plays, he's he's pretty. And I love them in summer league, so I just know him. Uh, bull side of things, they have a questionable tag on Alex Caruso. Otherwise, it's just the G Leaguers that are listed out here, uh, along with what you know has been the same injury report for a while with Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball and Patrick Williams and so on and so forth. So I was curious, so questionable. He's played through these questionable tags pretty consistently of late. It's still that left ankle sprain uh, noted here. What are your reads on Caruso's availability for tonight? Yeah, not going to find out. We saw that last week that they sat him out for practice and then had him in there. I think we're going to get a lot of Q tags. So I would lean him in. But the question would be, does he start? I don't know. Uh, we this has been a pretty common theme. We heard like all the Donovan stuff, like oh yeah, you know, shorten the game, it's easier. Oh, I want to start him in earlier to give him more shorter stints. Like they, he just has no go to uh, on Caruso. So I don't really know, uh, but I think he will have pretty consistent minutes in the like low thirties. It's just a matter of like how they want to use him here. You would think they'd play him smaller. Uh, they put him on Halliburton, so I think he would start, and maybe they do the hey, we'll play you like six four minutes or what six, five minutes stints or whatever it is. Right. Um, so that's, that could be something there. So I'm expecting him to start an uh, interesting quote from Billy Donovan. Cause uh, Vooch only had five shots from the field and there were questions from the beat saying like, Hey, how could that happen against the wizards? Like the center matchup. Um, if you're a scout, like why are you not getting your center um, more touches? Anywho. So he had an interesting quote. He was like, Hey, the young guys can't read defenses and know when to get the ball to Vooch basically. That might have been a shot at Ayo Desunmu. Um, interestingly, I don't know if it was at Kobe. I don't think so. I think it was Ayo. Just I didn't watch too much of this game, but I think it was a little shot at Ayo. So keep an eye on that. I don't really think there's anything to take away from it, but it was quite an interesting quote uh, from a coach this time of year. Yeah, I think it was at both. Honestly, um, I, yeah. I think both both guys. I mean, it was a it was a big part of the broadcast. They were talking repeatedly about how yep. Vooch had mismatches the whole time, and nobody's getting him the ball over and over. And um, that's mostly on Io and Kobe. They're they're the guys mm-hmm. who have the ball in their hands a bunch. So I think it was at both of them. Uh, yeah. Lakers and Memphis. Lakers on the second night of a back to back year after a big win in overtime yesterday against Milwaukee. Massive minutes for Anthony Davis. He's listed questionable with left knee hyperextension. LeBron James listed questionable after missing last night's game with the tendinopathy. They're still without Jared Vanderbilt, Gabe Vincent, Christian Wood, and Jalen hood Shiftino. So what's your expectation for the Lakers uh, tonight? That was a really big win last night that improved their playoff odds um, in terms of getting into round one of the playoffs, which for them right now, as things currently stand, that means winning two consecutive games in the play. And um, they increased their playoff odds on the, the, on the sports market books by the uh, two way odds from like 38% to make the playoffs to like 44, 45%. So it was a pretty big win last night in terms of shifting playoff odds uh, from the market. What's your expectation tonight in the matchup versus Memphis? So yeah, Chris Haynes said last night, who's very plugged in to LeBron said he is expected to play against Memphis. Dave McMenamin from ESPN already backed that up. So pretty sure LeBron's going to play. Everyone else should be good. So obviously LeBron he'll start over Spencer Dinwiddie, who, again, man, he was bad. Um, didn't matter. Nice win. AD uh, bumps into Chris Middleton, has inflammation, according to Darvin Ham, and had they had to massage him to, like, get the inflammation down. If you saw, if you're watching the game, they were, like, rubbing him down. Um, and AD said that, you know, he just kind of toughed it out and played freaking great, you know, a couple threes. Um, just a ma- masterpiece from uh, AD. He keeps playing through stuff, man. I, I mean... I mean, they gotta sit him right. Like that, and he was like limping so bad last night. So, I think there's a chance he sits. They'll probably game time him. He's been, I don't know. It was, it was, it looked terrible. Like it, it looked like it was like, oh no, not here comes the locker room fan. Get the get the draft ready for the AD locker room. But yeah, really tough that out. I, I still kind of just lean sit. Played 52 minutes most since Kobe's played in a Lakers game. So, uh, do lean him sitting. Obviously, Austin Reeves dynamite second half, uh, triple double. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, you know, Rui played a bunch, didn't play enough in the fourth quarter, much to our chagrin is Torian Prince got a, you know, a lot of fourth quarter runs. So, um, lean, slight lean, the AD out, uh, strong lean, 
uh, LeBron in, and then that would be for Spencer Dinwiddie. If AD didn't play, they'd be starting Jackson Hayes, who they did overlap uh, a decent bit yesterday. Yeah, and um, you know, I know occasionally uh, Lefko tunes into our shows. Uh, you know, if you can get word to the other TNT guys on giving Anthony Davis some credit for playing through stuff this year, because yeah, you know, Chuck and Shaq have had their uh, their commentary on Anthony Davis and his ability to play through stuff. He is currently fifth in the league in minutes this year. He's played 60 to 72 games mm-hmm. for them. Incredibly durable season from Anthony Davis uh, in his age yeah. 30 season. And honestly, I I think he should get shouted out for this with as much crap as he's yeah. taken over the years because he is he is one of the main reasons, obviously, that the Lakers uh, still have hope this season. And so yeah. I actually would love to see him get a game off after the 52 minutes last night, but he has played yeah. through a lot of stuff. And I wonder I wonder if he's kind of been like coaxed into this by being taunted about this stuff, that he's like trying to play through so much stuff. And I'm just worried that it's going to happen at the wrong time. And I want to see Anthony Davis healthy in the playoffs. So I would love to see him take take tonight off. Yeah, and I'll I'll say Le- Lefko did a pretty good job of that last night. I thought on the post game nice. show he was kind of saying like, "Hey, you know, you know, he takes a bad rap." He did a pretty good job defending him. I saw. I thought uh, as nice. always, Lefko just just always yeah. so plugged in does such a great job. All right, let's go to the Memphis side of things where Brandon Clark is questionable. That's exciting for us, uh, longtime Brandon Clark fans. He has missed mm-hmm. the entire season so far after an Achilles tear last year. They have a doubtful tag on John Conchard, doubtful tag on Vince Williams Jr., out tags for Luke Kennard, John Morant, Derek Rose, Marcus Smart, Yuta Watanabe, and Zaire Williams. So do we see the return of Brandon Clark tonight? Sure sounds like it. Uh, usually Memphis will put the doubtful tags, like, hey, it's coming, and then bam, you know, it's 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 here. So pretty much everything from the beats uh, is saying that he's going to be in there. Uh, he's been doing five on five for a couple weeks now. Uh, you know, did some pregame shooting uh, at Ball Arena. So he's pretty much in pretty hard cap here coming you know returning from uh, achilles surgery so we're basically having him just the non-jaron minutes uh probably getting trey jemison to mostly go away here i will see if they you know take a game count off him there so yeah great story but certainly not fantasy viable yet um memphis pretty good matchup here the lakers defense has been pretty bad uh, and their offense has been freaking killer uh, so maybe Memphis can kind of get it going. Uh, Jaron, obviously, we talked about the role. Bain's been not as great of a role as I thought. Uh, Scotty Pippen actually did some decent handling. So we've got that. Um, that mostly covers it. We did get, you know, Lamar back, uh, LaRavia playing through Q tags. They, they all look to be pretty good. So the starting lineup should be Scotty Pippen, Desmond Bain, Gigi Jackson, Santi Aldama, and Jaron Jackson. Expecting, as I mentioned, you know, lowish teens minutes for Brandon Clark. LaRavia locked and loaded. Lamar Stevens mostly locked and loaded. Uh, and then uh, Dijon Giroux, he's on a second 10 day deal. I'm not, I got to do the math here, but I think this could be his last game. So they could play him today and then let him go. And then maybe Jordan Goodwin's back or maybe they bring someone else in. So basically, the bottom line here is I, I don't think Jordan Goodwin's playing today. I think we have like two minutes um, just to note that. So that mostly covers their rotation today. All right, let's move to San Antonio and Utah. On the San Antonio side, Victor Wembanyama listed questionable with that left ankle sprain. Keldon Johnson listed questionable with right knee soreness. They're coming off of a surprising win against the Phoenix Suns without Victor Wembanyama. What is your expectation today on whether we see Wemby tonight and whether we see Keldon Johnson? I went to shoot around, uh, both of them, but they did call up Seti Suzuko. Uh, that's interesting timing. I think they're in. I would not be surprised if they are not. They will certainly be cautious uh, with Wembenyama, but expecting him in, obviously, if Wemby didn't play, that would be, uh, you know, Zach Collins back in the mix. And then, you know, the Malachi Branhams would be, if Keldon didn't play, um, more Malachi minutes, you know, really big leash on on uh, Devin Vassell. Uh, Sohan coming off a monster game, 26-18, dagger three-pointer, basically, um, to beat the Suns. We'll talk about the Suns in a little bit. I'll save that stuff. But, um, yeah, it seems like they're going to be game time, but going to shoot around, not really serious injuries for these guys. So I'd lean in, but the Spurs are certainly, you know, maybe they want to try to tank it a little bit. But, uh, yeah, mostly covers it. Uh, Utah side of things, they are without Jordan Clarkson, still without Chris Dunn. They will have Laurie Markkinen listed available here. And then they've got the G-Leaguers listed as questionable. That includes Johnny Juzang, who's been in the rotation of late. Mm -hmm. But Micah Potter, Jason Preston, Kenneth Lofton Jr., and Darius Baisley among the G-Leaguers listed questionable for on assignment. What is your expectation on what we'll see from Utah tonight? So I think that they're going to start calling sex in, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did not because they don't have Jordan Clarkson. And we've seen Will Hardy say, Hey, we don't have Clarkson. We want to basically make Colin Sexton 
Clarkson. Uh, so that would mean it's possible that Johnny Juzan could get the start. I still lean Sexton getting the start. So I'm, I'm expecting, with not a lot of confidence, uh, well, I'm expecting with confidence, uh, Keontae George, Taylor Hendricks, Laurie Market, and John Collins, and then leaning Collins Sexton. Wouldn't be surprised uh, if they start Johnny Juzang or something along those lines, just to give them that Sexton six man kind of role that they're going to need with the way Will Hardy likes to run his rotation. Give them a little bit of insurance because um, they're going to want to give Keontae George a pretty big handling role. Yeah, that's that's mostly it. Obviously, this defense is complete dumpster fire, basically the worst defense in the NBA for a really long period of stretch of time here. Um, yeah, but, you know, Lauren Markkinen's had this uh, quad tag for a bit. We I mentioned, you know, a week ago that, like, he basically said that, you know, I'll just let the young guys kind of develop and all that. So if he should be in, he's been pretty full when he's in. So um, matchups – TBD uh, with Wimbanyama in there. Wimbanyama's on-off splits defensively are pretty good. So um, we'll see. But expecting pretty big minutes for Keontae George. I think Sexton, who, again, when he plays, the minutes are pretty strong. So I think you could kind of, you know, not feel too nervous about a rug pull playing young guys. But again, you know, famous last words. Yeah, and if Sexton is off the bench, right, that would have a starting lineup that would really funnel a lot of the usage and ball handling into Keontae George's hands in terms mm-hmm. of, like, you've got Keontae George, you can run pick and roll with Collins or pick and pop with Laurie Markkinen, and Keontae George can be the sole distributor there. That would actually be a pretty friendly role tonight if you saw that, um, to mm-hmm. have two players who are pretty good at converting assists uh, as your guys to pass to, and then all the ball handling without Sexton. So kind of an interesting note that if Sexton is in the is uh, in the reserve unit and not starting, it's a pretty good sign yeah. for Keontae George, I think, as well. Yep. Bit um, of a bad basketball game of the night as well. Uh, cover boy Devin Vassell. I think Devin Vassell is a big game tonight, especially if those guys don't play. All right, Phoenix and Denver on the Sun side of things. Bradley Beal questionable with the right finger sprain. Yusuf Nurkic questionable with the right ankle sprain. They both left last game early. Uh, what are your expectations on their potential return tonight? We have them in. I think they are out. Um, they, I think Nurk's 75% out. Like I almost mm. want to pull him, but it's the late start. It's not usually how we roll. Uh, he did roll. His ankle looked pretty bad. Now, pretty discouraged Frank Vogel after the game. I think he's missing, um, you know, big guy ankle ankle roll like that. I think he's probably got a good chance to sit. No practice. Pretty much everything is there to make me think he's not going to play. So poor Drew Eubanks um, going to get absolutely roasted by Joker. If that did happen, Bradley Beal, a little bit more confidence, right? Ring finger sprain. They taped him up right after he suffered it. So I thought he had a chance to go back in, but they didn't bring him back out. Um, so probably an okay chance he could play. And then if he didn't play, it'd be Rose and Neil starting. Obviously, Grayson Allen, massive role. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Devin Booker's first game against the Nuggets uh, lined up today. He missed the first two. So um, we saw him have a pretty big big series to start last year before falling apart. And, you know, Denver waxed them. But, yeah, so kind of a strongish lean out on Nurk. 50-50-ish on Beal leaning slightly out to me, given the no practice. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, Eubanks would start. They'd probably play Bull Bull, not not in the Joker minutes. Um, I could be could see some Thad Young. There was some comments saying that Daddy Young will be the backup five. This is about a week and a half ago, so I think Thad could sneak in there if Eubanks can't hang in the Joker minutes, which seems like a lock. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. But we could see a ton of Royce minutes here if Beal doesn't play. Yeah, interesting notes there for like late slate or showdown stuff because this game is the sole 10 o'clock game. Most of the games tonight are 8 o'clock Eastern and earlier um, on what to potentially expect there because Thad Young I don't think would be a lot of people's radars, but makes sense just given that they need size. Um, and, you know, if they're down Beal too, we've talked about this before without Nurkic, like playmaking is also part of the thing mm-hmm. that they miss um, in those lineups. So, yeah, interesting note there. Uh, Nuggets side of things, they've got some questionable tags here. Aaron Gordon and Jamal Murray, both questionable. And then Nikola Jokic and Michael Porter Jr., both probable. We know the Nuggets have been kind of managing their way through the end of the season here. They've navigated their way to the top spot in the Western Conference. They're now heavy favorites to end up with that top spot from a seeding perspective. I think they were down to like minus 330 on DraftKings Mm -hmm. to earn the number one seed. Uh, part of that is a friendly schedule the rest of the way and a home laden schedule the, the rest of the way as well. So good spot here for the Nuggets. But who who do we expect to see available tonight? Yeah, so I think Murray's the most likely to miss. You know, basically the beat said he wasn't going to play last game. He's been really battling through injuries here. So I think he's pretty unlikely to play. 
Again, we have him in, but he'd be most likely to sit. Reggie Jackson would start in his place. Aaron Gordon, again, plantar fasciitis. We talked about this, you know, when we did the podcast about late season NBA. When you get listed with plantar fasciitis, groin soreness, knee soreness, any of those lower, you know, anything foot related, plantar fasciitis is like at the top of the list. Like, hey, you need a game. Um, so maybe they want to, you know, put a dagger in the suns here. But I think so. I think Gordon fifty fifty slightly under uh, slightly unlikely for Jamal, which means massive, massive, massive role for Joker coming if Jamal can't play. Reggie Jackson would be in a pretty good spot. Curious to see what would happen if Aaron Gordon didn't play. We saw Christian Brown uh, get the start last time, which is pretty unusual. Now matchups different, namely Kevin Durant. Right? They really like to go to Peyton Watson to guard Kevin Durant. They've done it at times this year, at times last year down the stretch when they played them, when they were really shorthanded. Um, one of Peyton Watson's best games last year down the stretch was when he was guarding Kevin Durant. So wouldn't be shocked if they, like, pull Christian Brown out and then put Peyton Watson in. Again, that's if Aaron Gordon did miss. Um, but, yeah, you know, and, and Peyton Watson played awesome. Got the defensive player of the game chain um, in the last game as well. So I think that covers it for those guys. Yeah, just a massive – a lot of injuries for this late game. Yeah, and the seeding stuff you mentioned in terms of, like, you know, kind of trying to bury Phoenix and whatnot. It's an interesting position at the top of the Western Conference because some of these teams that you're looking at as most likely your eighth seed in the in the Western Conference are some of the teams that the uh, the odds makers in terms of conference finals odds seem to be most optimistic on relative to their playoff odds. And you've got Phoenix, the Lakers, and Golden State all there in that 8, 9, 10 range right now. Um, it's tricky. And obviously with the plane, you can't really control who you play. Um, so I, you know, I think teams can only really focus on themselves and then just let the chips fall where they may. It's one of the great things about the play in that it's made it that you can't really control kind of late season uh, um, seating quite as much. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. That will do it for this edition of Established Runs NBA Injury Report Analysis Show. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, if you're interested in supporting our content, one of the best ways to do so is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're about just about 150 or so subscribers short of our goal of 5,000 by the end of the year. So appreciate all of you helping us out, uh, letting your friends know about the content that we're putting up and including video episodes of our podcast, as I alluded to earlier, episode 358, the Jonte Porter situation is talked about in detail on the pod, on the YouTube feed here. So check that out after we finish here. If you want more free live content with us tonight, you can check us out on playback.tv slash ETR. Mike's got the link up there. You just cl click join on that channel and you can get notifications when we go live if you download their apps as well. But we'll be on from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Myself, Sam Jafarina, Mark Dank and bring Talk, flipping around the league, sweating bets, talking process, answering your questions, and just hanging out with you all while we enjoy a very full NBA slate tonight. There will be lots of games we can swap, uh, flip around to. And we'll also have some league pass giveaways for daily league pass uh, passes as well. So hop on over there tonight, playback.tv slash ETR, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. If you're interested in our premium content behind the paywall, you can go to establishrun.com slash subscribe dash MBA for more details on our premium product offerings tonight. Beyond the paywall, it'll be myself and Mike Gallagher walking through this big 12-game slate. I think it's 10 in the DFS streets. Either way, we'll be talking about the good chalk, the bad chalk, the contrarian plays, and, of course, the flag plants. So join us behind the paywall at 5 o'clock Eastern on Establish the Show. And if you enjoy this free content and want to keep it free, the best way to do so is to feed that algorithm, which helps feed our families. And the way to do that is by smashing that like button. You smash that like button, it feeds the algo, helps us feed our families, allows us to feed you the NBA injury information analysis you need each and every day to set your seed long lineups, your DFS lineups, and make your spread bets and your prop bets. So smash that like button, feed that algorithm. Nom, 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 nom. We'll see you next time.